Gene therapy grows new skin for dying boy. A young patient who lost most of his skin to a genetic disease now has a new chance at life, thanks to a breakthrough therapy that gave him replacement skin. The seven-year-old boy was born with junctional epidermal lysis bullosa, a condition in which a gene defect causes the skin to become fragile, often tearing and forming blisters. By June 2015, the boy had gotten two bacterial infections that destroyed two-thirds of his skin. He was treated with antibiotics, bandages, and even a skin graft from his father, but nothing worked. Doctors decided to use gene therapy on a patch of non-blistered skin and used a virus to carry a corrected version of the defective gene into the skin cells. The engineered cells were grown into sheets of skin and grafted onto the child's body to replace his missing skin. The grafts took and grew, and the patient was discharged by February 2016. His epidermis is currently stable and doesn't blister or itch. Keep watching to see more medical breakthroughs. Breakthrough Nanochip heals injuries with just one touch. Researchers at Ohio State University have developed a new technology that allows the body to generate any type of cell to help heal injuries. Tissue nanotransfection involves placing a fingernail-sized nanochip on a patient's skin, adding a droplet of genetic material, and zapping it with an electrical current. The DNA is delivered through channels created by the current, and it reprograms skin cells to turn into specific cell types that can then be used in other parts of the body. When tested on a mouse with a damaged leg, researchers found vascular cells converted from skin cells formed new blood vessels that allowed the leg to heal in two weeks. The non-invasive technology was also able to generate nerve cells in the legs of brain-damaged mice. Once the cells were harvested, they were injected into the brain to help with stroke recovery. The nanochip also tested effectively in pigs and is expected to be approved for human trials within a year. Man's paralyzed limb reanimated with the help of a brain chip. A team from Ohio has made a medical breakthrough, successfully developing technology that allows brain signals to bypass a spinal injury and transmit straight to the muscles. When Ian Burkhart broke his neck four years ago, it damaged his spinal cord and left him paralyzed from the chest down. He retained some movement in his shoulders and biceps, but lost sensation in his hands and legs. To help him, doctors inserted a chip the size of an eraser head into his motor cortex, the area of the brain that controls hand movements. The chip records brain signals for specific hand movements and sends these to a computer via a port on the back of Burkhardt's head. Once the signals are decoded, they're transmitted to an arm sleeve studded with electrodes. The electrodes stimulate the muscles and allow them to move. The system, called NeuroLife, has allowed Burkhardt to make six different hand and wrist motions. It marks the first time a paralyzed man has been able to regain movement using recorded brain signals. Detecting Alzheimer's years before symptoms begin. Researchers at Washington University in St. Louis have developed a simple blood test that may be able to detect whether a person is developing Alzheimer's disease. Amyloid plaques, the buildup of amyloid beta proteins in the brain, start developing more than 15 years before the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease start to surface. At the moment, the only ways to monitor plaque buildup are through PET scans or spinal tap procedures. Researchers have developed a new blood test that can detect the amyloid beta buildup in the brain. The test measures the amounts of three amyloid subtypes, the peptides amyloid beta 38, 40, and 42. It has been found that the levels of amyloid beta 42 are consistently 10 to 15% lower than amyloid beta 40 in people with amyloid plaques in the brain. The blood test is said to have an accuracy rate of 89% over 20 blood samples. Researchers plan to expand the experiment to include 180 people. Limitless blood supply is not too far off. It's taken nearly two decades, but scientists may finally have the recipe to create stem cells, that wellspring of life and holy grail of regenerative medicine. A Boston research team programmed human pluripotent stem cells to become endothelial cells, which typically line the inside of blood vessels. These were injected with special proteins called transcription factors, then transplanted into mice. Weeks later, the cells had multiplied and in some cases formed a wide range of human blood cells in the mice's bodies. 
A second research team used blood cells from mice and injected them with a mix of transcription factors. The cells morphed into stem cells after incubating in petri dishes designed to mimic a human blood vessel environment. When injected into weak mice that had been treated with radiation, the stem cells regenerated both blood and immune cells. The mice recovered and went on to live full lifespans. The groundbreaking research from both teams provides hope for patients who suffer from blood cancers and other diseases. But tests need to be carried out to determine any negative effects before the procedure can go to human trials. Scientists are calling this a medical breakthrough. A drug typically used to treat arthritis and fever can cut the risk of heart attacks. According to U.S. government information, heart disease accounts for one in four American deaths each year. New research suggests that the anti-inflammatory drug canakinumab can reduce the risk of a repeat heart attack by 15%. The research tracked 10,000 heart attack patients in 40 countries who were treated with the drug every three months over a period of four years. Canakinumab was shown to be more effective than statin, another drug heart disease patients usually take to lower cholesterol. The researchers also found some in the study, most notably the elderly and diabetics, contracted potentially fatal infections and sepsis. Experts say the drug could save lives, but some are wary of the side effects.